Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. Dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the third class feast of St. John of Triora, a Franciscan martyr in China. John Lantra was born near Triora in Liguria, Italy, on March the 15th, 1760. He joined the Franciscans when he was 17. He was later ordained a priest and went to the Chinese missions. During his time there, he restored the sacred institutions which had practically fallen into decay. He prayed and sacrificed for the spread of the faith, and God rewarded this ardor in spreading the gospel by working miracles through him. He caused a spring which had run dry to flow again by making the sign of the cross over it. John continued the work of spreading the faith, but at last he was apprehended and brought before the magistrates. To the questions that were put to him, he answered in a manner worthy of the ancient martyrs. He spent seven months in prison, enduring tortures too cruel to describe. With iron chains around his neck and his hands and feet tied, he was dragged violently to a cross which lay on the ground that he might tread on it. But this he refused to do, and he was sentenced to death. He was led to the place of execution, where he prostrated himself five times to adore our Lord and to give public testimony of his faith. He was fastened to a cross and strangled on February the 7th, 1818. It's interesting how St. Teresa of the Child Jesus was made one of the patrons of the missions, and she never left the monastery, but she would pray and sacrifice for the missions, offer herself for the missionaries. The missionaries in those days would go to the missions carrying the crucifix, evangelizing with the cross. St. Louis de Montfort speaks about the apostles of the end times, how they will have the cross in one hand and the rosary in the other. We can say that these apostles will be like missionaries of Mary, bringing the sweet fragrance of the mother of God to souls. But there is a need also to have victim souls, souls who not only bring the cross, but have the cross inside them, those who have been crucified spiritually. There are even some souls, canonized and some in the process of being canonized, who bore the stigmata, the wounds of Christ on their body. And we see particularly um, from the 17th century onwards, we've had quite a few of them, such as the Carmelite mystic, Saint Miriam or Saint Mary of Christ crucified, also known as the Little Arab. She had the stigmata. The Italian passionist Saint Gemma Galgani. The German laywoman, Venerable Teresa Newman. Blessed Elena Aiello, the Italian foundress. Saint Padre Pio of Pietrocina. And there was also another Capuchin, the servant of God, Father Domenico da Cese, who was based in Manapello where they have an image of the Holy Face. Father Domenico died in 1978, 10 years after Padre Pio. These were all victim souls who were bringing down many blessings upon the world through their victimhood. But these souls grew up in a time when there was great love for the cross. The current state of the world is calling us to enter into this martyrdom of the cross, to be generous and enter into this victimhood, to appease the anger of God, to save souls 
and to mitigate any punishment that God may send to us in these times. And if we think of some of those saints who had the grace to die being crucified or fastened to the cross, this should encourage us to be generous. If we think of St. Peter, who was crucified upside down, St. Andrew, who was crucified on the cross in the form of an X, if you think of the Japanese martyrs, who not too long ago we celebrated their feast, the Japanese martyrs such as St. Peter Baptist, who was crucified and had a lance thrust into him. And if we think of today's saint, St. John of Triora, who was fastened to a cross and strangled to death. The cross is where God wants to take us all, dear brothers and sisters. And let us remember the third secret of Fatima, where there was a vision of the Pope, clergy, religious, and laity going up a hill, and on the top of that hill was a large cross. Dear brothers and sisters, let us do what we can to put the cross at the center of our society, to raise and elevate the cross, to proclaim to the world that through the cross we have been redeemed, and on the cross is our Savior. This must be one of the characteristics of a missionary of Mary, love of the cross. For the Blessed Virgin Mary was at the foot of the cross, the Blessed Virgin Mary was united to the cross. And we can say that in a certain sense, the Blessed Virgin Mary was crucified spiritually. We cannot separate the cross from Our Lady or Our Lady from the cross. And even the five-decade rosary beads that many of you will have has a cross on it. And the great Marian apostle, St. Louis de Montfort, who wrote such beautiful works on the Blessed Virgin Mary, also wrote a work called The Friends of the Cross. And you'll see images of St. Louis de Montfort with him holding a cross. So let us enter into this mystery of this martyrdom of the cross and desire it, dear brothers and sisters. And let us conclude by remembering the cross and the M on the miraculous medal, on the back of your miraculous medal, you see a cross with an M, which in many ways symbolizes the co-redemption. This is what we have to have in our hearts. This is what we have to have in our soul, impressed on us, this cross and M, as if we're branded or marked. And we can receive this by standing at the foot of the cross, in imitation of Mary co-redemptrix, united to Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, Christ crucified on the cross. So with the cross and the M, our soul can become these missionaries of Mary, apostles of Mary, victims of Mary, and instruments in the salvation of souls. And as St. John of Triora caused a spring which had run dry to flow again by making the sign of the cross over it, if you have the cross within you, God will work miracles through you, miracles of grace of conversion. And you can become a missionary of Mary remaining in your own home in imitation of St. Teresa of Lisieux, who never left the monastery, praying and suffering for the missions. And what a time to begin during this time of lockdown to enter into this um, being a missionary of Mary, even from your own home. So we pray to St. John of Triora to obtain this grace that we can become missionaries and apostles of Mary, victims of her immaculate heart, who with the cross and the M in their soul, with the cross in one hand and the rosary in the other, they can help to place Christ at the center of society, saying, Viva Cristo Re! Christ, the King of the universe, and let us desire to be these missionaries of Mary, these victim souls to usher in the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.